Hopefully some of you have seen my video where I narrowed down my collection of VST synthesizers to just two. And the focus on that video was identifying two like more uh, virtual analog or traditional synthesis style synths, not so much the samplers. And in that video, I gave an honorable mention and shout out to Omnisphere, perhaps one of the greatest software synths ever made. But I said, I wouldn't be considering it because I thought of it more, or I considered it as more of a rompler. So what is a rompler? Well, it's not a real word for once. It's just a word, a term that we've made up in the synthesizer community. For me, it means a synthesizer that uses samples as its oscillator. And some of my very favorite synthesizers have been romplers. So it wasn't meant as a slur or anything. I love my rompers. I have a Nautilus over there and a Yamaha Modi X. Both of, the use, both of those use samples as their oscillators, plus a few other sound engines, of course, as well. And in fact, the legend that is Eric Pershing also designed and built some of my very favorite romplers, starting with the Roland D50 that used partials of samples to create the sound. Although some people also consider that the first virtual analog. So it's very confusing. What is the definition of a rompler? If you have any better ideas, let me know in the comments. But for me, it's any kind of synthesizer that uses samples as its oscillator. And Omnisphere comes with a huge sample library of about 60 gigabytes. So that's why I thought it was more in the rompler territory. Anyway, let's cut the story short and get on to what happened next. Actually, it's already a really long story, so sorry, but stick with me because it gets very interesting. So I get an email a couple of days later from the artist relations team at Spectrasonics, the creators of Omnisphere. And they were very courteous. They thanked me very generously for featuring and mentioning Omnisphere on the video, but they did want to point out that Omnisphere is not a rompler. Before we go on, firstly, how awesome it is that Spectrasonics, a company I really admire and respect, are watching the videos on my channel. Thank you very much, guys, if you happen to be watching this. A very nice gentleman from Spectrasonics called James very politely pointed out to me that whilst it can use samples as a source for the oscillator, it can do so much more. It has virtual analog waveforms, hundreds of them actually, and wave tables and the manipulation of the waveforms and so on and so on, plus all of the amazing granular synthesis that it can do on that sample library as well. So yeah, they were very clear to point out it can do so much more than just rompler type science. And in fact, many of you pointed that out to me in the comments as well. So thank you for that. I had clearly underestimated the capabilities of Omnisphere. So I apologize if I misrepresented it and undersold it somewhat. So we exchanged a few emails on this topic and eventually James very generously offered to hook me up with a NFR, a review license for Omnisphere so that I can try it out for myself, see what the capabilities are and share some of it with you. So a huge thank you. This is amazing because this is a synthesizer that's been on my bucket list for very many years, long before I started the channel. I've been curious to check out Eric Persing's great creation, Omnisphere. So that's the context, a bit of a background story that I hope you found interesting. Enough of that, now let's jump over to the computer. We'll fire up Omnisphere and I'll try and show you as we learn together a little bit about how this incredibly complicated and powerful synthesizer works. We'll try and figure out together why Omnisphere is not a rompler, Woody. Please don't think of this as a tutorial, but we'll just dive into the user interface here together and understand why this is not a rompler. So let me share a little bit of info about the architecture anyway. Right now we are editing a patch. A patch consists of four layers. You can see them here, A, B, C, D only A is active at the moment. So we're gonna zoom in on one layer of one patch. And we're not gonna go there today, but I'll mention it anyway. Then you can layer up patches here. You can have eight of these four layer patches 
playing at the same time in various combinations of uh, splits, stacks, layers, and so on. Very interesting. But today, we're going to zoom in and focus on the oscillators. What have we got going on? Well, here's one oscillator then on this layer A. We can have either a sample, which is why I assumed Omnisphere was a rompler. I've loaded up one called African Children Playing. Not just any children, but these are Africans, and this is what it sounds like. Yeah. Okay, so um, this is not a multi-sample, so it will, just like old school samplers, speed up and slow down as you track up and down on the keyboard. But there are multi-samples available as well, which don't do that. I just randomly chose this African children playing because it was at the start, it was at the start of the alphabetical list. Okay, but this is where it gets interesting. Let's step outside of sample territory and go to the synth page here. You can choose either a sample or a virtual analog synth waveform as the source of your oscillator here. I've chosen a synth waveform. This is the default saw square bright. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> What's the matter with my playing? Anyway, never mind. What I wanted to demonstrate was yes, this has got virtual analog waveforms and plenty of them. Check this out. If I click on this button here, then you can see we have five traditional waveforms, which is what Omnisphere shipped with in the early days. But check this out. We have classic waveforms, variety of pulses, well, loads of them. Sawtooth. You can see we have a D50 stuff in here, JP8 we have, JP8000, Juno stuff, Profit, Prologues over here. And these are not samples, guys. These are uh, models. These are virtual models of the waveforms of these classic synthesizers. Same thing for square wave. We have ARPS, D50 again. Yeah, and if we just step to the analog section, we have even more to play with. Let's jump into one of these classics. Let's go for a sawtooth. Go for the D50. So let's step through a couple of these. This is the D50 saw one. I'm going to have to play with my left hand and do the mouse with my right. So sorry for any dubious playing. I've added a little bit of effects here as well. I've put a reverb on the aux send and sent a little bit of the sound over to there to make it a bit more pleasant for us. So back to here. So you can see a huge variety of different tones available to us here. Let's stop with this one, the Juno 60 saw, for example. You can, see, you can see the shape of it there. And let me show you a few other things that set this apart from the romplers. Check this out. When I manipulate this shape slider, see what happens. Try that for a different waveform just for giggles, JP, JX8P saw. So what's actually happening here, this is a wavetable. It's not just a single waveform that's been generated and modeled. It's a wavetable. And by sliding this, we can morph between all of the frames in the wavetable. Incredible. This, of course, you can't do with samples. But there's more. Let's have a look at the Mini Brute saw, which is morphing between a square waveform and a sawtooth, just like that. You could, of course, modulate this if you wanted to. But then we have this extra parameter, symmetry. Let's see what this does. Very interesting. This is, seems to be adjusting when we have a pulse waveform, the pulse width, pulse width. And then going back to the sorted, yeah. If you want to mess around with your waveforms, this is the place to do it. 
Also, we have a hard sync, which sounds like this. So, perhaps you're beginning to understand why Spectrosonics objected slightly to me calling this synthesizer a rompler, but let's explore a few other options as well that take it way outside the territory of a rompler. So I've gone back to our basic sawtooth waveform here. We can zoom in on some of these buttons down here. Let's click on FM. Yes, we have an FM synthesizer, which we can enable for those DX7 kind of style of sounds. Let's see how this works. Oh. I think, do we have the... Yeah, I think this is working in combination with the sawtooth wave that we previously chose. So yeah, I'm not going to dig into this because I don't know how it works, but just to let you know that there is also an FM synthesis engine as well. And we can see a few other things as well. Let's have a look. We have ring modulator. <laughs> Again, I don't know how ring modulation works and I'm not a huge fan of the sound of it, but it's there if you want it. Carrying on, we have a wave shaper. Let's see what this does. Without it, with it, Wow, a bit crusher. Yeah, this is pretty deep. I think you can agree with me there, but there's more. Let's take a look at the unison. Here's our basic sawtooth again with just one oscillator. And if I click on the unison now, let's see what happens. Wow. And we can see on the screen, it's actually duplicating these oscillators and slightly detuning them. Again, you can't do this with a rompler. Or maybe you can. Let me know in the comments. Wow, what a sound. <laughs> with unison off. What else do we have? We have a harmonia, some kind of harmonizer. Take a listen. Single sawtooth, switch it on. A chord. Wow, what a massive sound. Would you keep, keep in mind we're using one layer here of one patch. It's just nuts. It's already sounding massive, and this is an init patch where we've just enabled a bit of reverb and the harmonia. So yeah, this is building chords, which you can shape, detune. Now I've made it sound horrible, but you can see what the potential is here, I'm sure. Normally you'd use this with the samples, I think, but we have a granulizer, a granular synthesis engine here as well. Let's switch it on, see what it sounds like with a sawtooth wave. Oh, nice. <laughs> and I assume we can switch all of these on at once. Ah, oh, no, we can only choose one of these. Oh, no, some of them you can combine. Whoa, so we've really messed up our sawtooth. So the possibilities are pretty much endless. So having dug into this a little bit, I can perhaps understand why Spectrosonics wanted to call me out on saying that Omnisphere was a rompler, and I'm really happy to get the opportunity to put the record straight. So I hope you enjoyed the background story and found the first look at the synthesizer interesting. I have many ideas of topics 
to cover with this synthesizer. It's amazingly deep and powerful and fantastic sounding as well. Truly inspiring. So I hope to demonstrate that for you in some future videos. Until then, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheerio.